Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video we'll be learning about the bones of the vertebral column. Now before I start with the explanation of the cervical vertebrae with the specimen, please note that these holes right here in the middle of the body of the vertebrae is not a part of a true vertebrae. Since they are artificial bones, they are seen here. So let's learn about the cervical vertebrae in detail. We have seven cervical vertebrae out of which the first, second and the seventh cervical vertebrae are atypical vertebrae while the third, fourth, fifth and sixth are typical cervical vertebrae. Now let's look at the typical cervical vertebrae in detail. For reference, I have taken the sixth cervical vertebra. Now firstly looking at its body. The body is small and broader from side to side than from before backwards, as you can see. The superior surface of the body is concave transversely, while the inferior surface is saddle shaped. The anterior and posterior surfaces resemble those of the other vertebrae. Looking at the vertebral foramen, it is triangular in shape and quite larger than the body right here. Moving on to the vertebral arch, the pedicles are directed backwards and laterally as you can see here and the lamina are relatively long and narrow. The superior articular processes and the inferior articular processes form articular pillars which project laterally at the junction of the pedicle and the lamina right here. The superior articular facets are flat, they are directed upwards and backwards as you can see here, while the inferior articular facets are flat as well, but they are directed downwards and forwards. These are the inferior articular facets. The transverse processes are pierced by a transverse foramen, as you can see right here. Each processes has anterior and posterior roots which end in tubercles, the anterior tubercle and the posterior tubercle. They are joined by the costo transverse bar. The costal element is represented by the anterior root, the anterior tubercle, the costo transverse bar and the posterior tubercle. The spine is short and bifid. Now let's look at the attachments on the typical cervical vertebra. Firstly, we have the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments. The anterior longitudinal ligament is attached to the upper border on the front of the body, while the posterior longitudinal ligament is attached to the lower border of the back of the body, right here. This is the anterior longitudinal ligament. This is the posterior longitudinal ligament. On each side of the anterior longitudinal ligament, right here, there is the attachment of the vertical plate of the longest coli muscle. This is the vertical part of the longest coli. The upper border and lower parts of the anterior surface of the lamina provides attachment to the ligamentum flava. The anterior tubercle gives origin to the scalenus anterior, the longus capitis and the oblique part of the longus coli. This is the scalenus anterior, the longus capitis and the oblique part of the longus coli. The posterior tubercle gives origin to muscles. Firstly, the scalenus medius, the scalenus posterior levator scapulae, the splenius services, the longissimus services and finally the iliocostalis services. This is the scalenus medius and this is the scalenus posterior. This is the levator scapulae. This is the splenius services. The spine gives origin to the deep muscles of the back of the neck which include the interspinalis, the semispinalis thoracis and services spinalis services and the multifidus. 
this is the interspinalis this is the semispinalis services now let's look at an easy way to remember the attachments on the typical cervical vertebrae the mnemonic used here is all people who elevated their spines on multiple long seats lost control now please note that the green color indicates the attachments of ligaments the red color indicates the origin of muscles firstly the all stands for anterior longitudinal ligament people stands for the attachment of the posterior longitudinal ligament elevated stands for the origin of levator scapulae spines for the origin of spinalis services and semispinalis thoracis and services as well as the interspinalis all these muscles have the word spinalis which is common in them next there is origin of multifidus that is indicated by the word multiple next the long stands for longus capitis in the oblique part of longus coli next we have seats which stands for scalenus anterior scalenus medius scalenus posterior the word scalene is common here now the law stands for the attachment of ligamentum flavum the word control stands for splenius services longissimus services iliocostalis services all the three muscles have the word services which is common in them now let's move on to the first cervical vertebra this is an atypical vertebra and it is called the atlas it can be identified by the following features it is ring shaped it has neither a body nor a spine secondly the atlas has a short anterior arch and a long posterior arch it has right and left lateral masses and transverse processes the anterior arch is marked by a median anterior tubercle on its anterior aspect its posterior surface bears an oval facet which articulates with the dense of the second cervical vertebrae the posterior arch forms about 2/5 of the ring and it is much longer than the anterior arch the upper surface of the posterior arch is marked by a groove just behind the lateral masses right here now each of the lateral masses show the following important features its upper surface bears a superior articular facet this facet is elongated forwards and medially now the lower surface is marked by the inferior articular facets these facets are nearly circular more or less flat directed downwards medially and backwards the transverse process projects laterally from the lateral mass right here it is unusually long and can be felt on the surface of the neck between the angle of the mandible and the mastoid process the transverse process is pierced by the transverse foramen moving on to the attachments on the atlas the anterior tubercle provides attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament and provides insertion on each side to the upper oblique part of the longus coli right here this is the anterior longitudinal ligament and the oblique part of the longus coli the upper border of the anterior arch gives attachment to the anterior atlanto occipital membrane this is the anterior atlanto occipital membrane the lower border of the anterior arch provides attachment to the lateral fibers of the anterior longitudinal ligament the posterior tubercle provides attachment to the ligamentum nuque in the median plane and gives origin to the rectus capitis posterior minor on each side this is the rectus capitis posterior minor behind the groove the upper border of the posterior arch provides attachment to the posterior atlanto occipital membrane the lower border of the posterior arch provides attachment to the highest pair of the ligamentum flava the tubercle on the medial side of the lateral mass right here gives attachment to the transverse ligament of the atlas
This is the transverse ligament of the atlas. The anterior surface of the lateral mass gives origin to the rectus capitis anterior. This is the rectus capitis anterior. The transverse process gives origin to the rectus capitis lateralis from its upper surface anteriorly, the superior oblique from its upper surface posteriorly, the inferior oblique from its lower surface right here. This is the rectus capitis lateralis. This is the superior oblique and this is the inferior oblique. The levator scapulae from its lateral margin and lower border, the splenius services and the scalenus medius from the posterior tubercle of the transverse process. Now an easy way to remember the attachments on the atypical C1 vertebrae is by the use of the mnemonic Alvin elevated himself on the long scale to reach out the new special atlas. Alvin here stands for anterior longitudinal ligament. Elevated stands for the origin of the levator scapulae. Long stands for the origin of the oblique part of the longus coli. Scale stands for the origin of scalenus medius. Reed stands for the origin of rectus capitis posterior minor as well as the rectus capitis lateralis. Out stands for the origin of superior oblique and the inferior oblique. New stands for the attachment of the ligamentum nuke. Special stands for the origin of splenius services. Atlas stands for the attachment of anterior atlanto occipital membrane as well as the posterior atlanto occipital membrane. Now let's move on to the second cervical vertebra. This is also called the axis. It is identified by the presence of the odontoid process or the dens, which is a strong tooth like process projecting upwards from the body as you can see right here. The superior surface of the body is fused with the dents and is encroached upon on each side by the superior articular facets as you can see here. The dents articulates anteriorly with the oval facet on the posterior surface of the anterior arch of the atlas as you can see right here and posteriorly with the transverse ligament of the atlas. The inferior surface has a prominent anterior margin which project downwards. Now let's look at its vertebral arch. The pedicles are concealed superiorly by the superior articular process, while the inferior surface presents a deep inferior vertebral notch. The lamina are thick and strong. Moving on to the articular facets, each superior articular facet occupies the upper surface of the body and of the massive pedicle. Laterally, it overhangs the foramen transversarium. As you can see, this is the transverse foramen and the superior articular facet overhangs it. It is large, flat and circular. It is directed upwards and laterally. The transverse processes are very small. The spine is large, thick and very strong. It is deeply grooved inferiorly. Its tip is bifid, terminating in rough tubercles. Now let's look at the attachments of the axis. The dense provides attachment at its apex to the apical ligament and on each side below the apex to the alar ligaments. This is the alar ligament. The anterior surface of the body right here receives the insertion of the longus coli. The anterior longitudinal ligament is also attached to the anterior surface. The posterior surface of the body provides attachment from below upwards to the posterior longitudinal ligament, the membrana tectoria and the vertical limb of the cruciate ligament. The lamina provide attachment to the ligamentum flava. The transverse processes gives origin by its tip to the levator scapulae, the scalenus medius anteriorly and the splenius services posteriorly. The spine gives attachment to the ligamentum nuke, the semispinalis services, 
the rectus capitis posterior major, the inferior oblique, the spinalis services, the interspinalis and the multifidus. Now let's look at an easy way to remember the attachments on the atypical C2 vertebra. The mnemonic used here is technician lightly asked all people to elevate their spines on multiple long scales and ring the interesting epic crucial alarm. Technician stands for the attachment of membrana tectoria. The word T is common here. Lightly stands for the attachment of ligamentum flava. L is common here. Asked stands for the attachment of the anterior longitudinal ligament. People stands for the attachment of posterior longitudinal ligament. Elevate stands for the origin of the levator scapulae. Spine stands for the origin of spinalis services. Interspinalis. Now the word spinalis is common in both these muscles. On stands for the origin of inferior oblique. Multiple stands for the origin of multifidus. Scales stands for the origin of scalenus medius. Ring stands for the origin of rectus capitis posterior major. Interesting stands for the attachment of the intertransverse muscles. Epic stands for the attachment of apical ligament. Crucial stands for the attachment of vertical limb of cruciate ligament. And finally, alarm stands for the attachment of the alar ligament. Now let's move on to the seventh cervical vertebrae. It is also known as the vertebra prominence because of its long spinous process, the tip of which can be felt through the skin at the lower end of the nuchal furrow. Its spine is thick, long and nearly horizontal. It is not bifid but ends in a tubercle. The transverse processes are comparatively large in size. The posterior root is larger than the anterior. The anterior tubercle is absent. The foramen transversarium or the transverse foramen is relatively small and sometimes double or may be entirely absent. It does not transmit the vertebral artery. Now let's look at the attachments of the vertebra prominence. The tip of the spine provides attachment to the ligamentum nuchae, the trapezius, rhomboid minor, serratus posterior superior, splenius capitis, semispinalis thoracis, spinalis cervicis, interspinalis and the multifidus. This is the trapezius muscle. This is the rhomboid minor. The posterior tubercle provides attachment to the suprapleural membrane. The lower border provides attachment to the levator costarum. Now let's look at an easy way to remember the attachments on the atypical C7 vertebrae. The mnemonic used here is new spine set was replaced by multiple spleen set by the college teacher. Now the word new stands for the attachment of ligamentum nuke. Spine stands for the origin of spinalis services, semispinalis thoracis and interspinalis. All these three muscles have the word spinalis common in them. Set stands for the attachment of the suprapleural membrane. Replay stands for the origin of rhomboid minor. Multiple stands for the origin of multifidus. Spleen stands for the origin of splenius capitis. Set stands for the origin of serratus posterior superior. College stands for the origin of the levator costarum and finally teacher stands for the origin of the trapezius muscle. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.